Howdy y'all, I'm Round the Wheel, you're watching Uncle Roundy Cracks a Pack. I hear that I've got a few perverts out in my audience who are into some hot printer action. Well, guess what? You're just gonna have to wait, because the printer wouldn't print for me today. I'm not the only dirty tease around here. Anyway, uh, today's pack opening is gonna be something a little bit different. A little more focused, a little more purpose driven than our usual pack opening. I'll explain it when we get there, but first I'm going to show off a few cute little things I bought today. One of them is this uh, this dragon token, this 5-5 dragon token with flying. Uh, my Rada Heart of Keld deck uh, has a card that can make dragon tokens, and I saw this at my LGS today, so I decided to pick it up. It's an animated dragon token. Uh, this is from a company called Cardama Jigs. I assume they have an online presence. I wasn't terribly curious or inquisitive about it. You can tilt the dragon, and he breathes fire, and he's super cute. He looks kind of like the Dig Dug enemy, doesn't he? The Figar. He looks kind of like the kind of like the old Dig Dug enemy, except he's a little. Well, that was a dragon too, but you know what? So, oh, hey, is there? Is there? Oh, there's a little backwards signature, partially in it as well. The the butts bow guy. This is super cute. This was like two bucks, and it's like, and this will be awesome to bust out at the table whenever my Whenever my Dragon Master Outcast starts making lands. So, little dragon token. Also picked up some relic tokens. Uh, finally, I know the people that I work with are probably glad I picked up some of these. Because uh, it means I can, I have my own life counters for Commander now. And I can I don't have to borrow from somebody anymore. Uh, you know that person. Always, always apologizing for not having a life counter, not having tokens. Let's crack this baby. Oh, there's three there's three little life counter token things in here. Three dials to track token power and toughness or other game mechanics, life total, loyalty, energy counters, etc. Good times. We've got a uh, looks like we've got a little foil thopter token in the front here. That one's cute. Uh, well, it's not foil per se, but it does have the shininess of a foil. Sometimes those have those in there. We got a foil. We got, and we got a couple of upside down ones here. We got an elemental. This is pretty crazy looking. That's a, that's a scurry elemental. And we got a dinosaur with trample. Who doesn't love dinosaurs with trample? I like my little, I like my little shiny thopter though. He's cute. I'd say that's pretty awesome. But yeah, just picked up some relic tokens, some animated dragon tokens. And now on to the pack opening, which is going to be, we have two packs today. Uh, these packs are from Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance. Uh, these sets came out not long after I started playing Magic, so they've got a lot of nostalgia for me. Uh, Guilds of Ravnica came out in 2018 on my birthday. That was the year I started playing Magic. It was kind of like, felt made it feel like kismet. This was the first set that came out new when I had started playing Magic. And we're going to be doing something today that I'm going to call the One Shot Shockland Challenge. One pack of each of these sets, one chance to get what is colloquially called a shock land. Uh, it was a very popular land cycle in these sets in which they're rare lands and you they come into play tapped unless you pay two life. And they were very popular, uh, very cool mechanic. You can decide to bring it in tapped. Uh, if you don't need to spend the mana right away, or if you think that paying a little bit of life is a worthy trade-off, you can bring it in immediately, and it gives you one of two colors. I had a few shock lands back in the day, but I very foolishly got rid of them because Uncle Roundy is a big bowl of stupid, smothered in stupid sauce. I had a Temple Garden. I had a Blood Crypt. I had a Steam Vents. This was before I knew about Commander and before I knew the utility that Shocklands would have in Commander. And I just got rid of it. So we're going to take we're gonna take one shot from each of these sets and we're going to try to get ourselves a Shockland. Now there are cards that could be more valuable than a Shockland. And I'm, I definitely won't pitch a fit if we get one of those. But here we go. We're going to go ahead and open up today and see if we can't score ourselves a Shockland. Most of the time we just open a pack on here. And we're like, what's inside? Who knows? But today, we're looking for something very specific. We're, we're shooting our shot, and we're going to see what the day brings us. We got the Loxodon Restorer, the Elephant Cleric, the Demir Informant, 
who I love surveilling. Surveilling was a new mechanic at the time. It's like scrying, except you can throw the stuff you don't want in your graveyard instead of at the bottom of your library. I like surveilling. Hope it comes back someday. That was that was really cool. That was a really cool mechanic to get into. It was as new for everyone else as it was for me. Got the rubble belt boar here. Target creature gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Boars aren't usually very exciting. We got the we got the ugly vigor spore worm with the bad breath. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. That is the opposite of menace. Never happened. Never happened. Just up and choked the guy out. Stole the memories out of his eyeball. It's like it never happened to him. Black plus two. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. Very, very nice. Like a slightly more powerful duress. Got the Dark Blade Agent. Uh, this is a Ravnica. These are Ravnica sets, so multicolored creatures were the order of the day. Uh, just like they're going to be in the forthcoming Strixhaven. Uh, let's see. We got the Centaur Peacemaker. Another four life gainer. Good friends with the with the Loxodon guy there. Whisper Agent, when he enters the battlefield, you scry one, or sorry, you surveil one. Surveilling is like scrying, but a little different. The Capture Sphere, oh no, this big old monster got caught in a bubble. Erstwhile Trooper, yeah, got our, got our comments here. They're not terribly exciting. This is not, this is not a set that had exciting commons. Uh, the uncommons are kind of cool sometimes. Has to marshal one white, a one one human soldier. Whenever has to marshal at least two other creatures attack, create a one one white soldier creature token with a life link. Smelt worn Minotaur. When you cast an insert or sorcery spell, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. Minotaurs. Minotaurs may get their day in the sun someday. As far as like you know, tribal, uh, they're getting there. They're getting there. It may be possible to make a solid Minotaur build. One of these days. Gird for battle. This was a favorite card of mine uh, back in the day. Uh, one white. You put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. That seemed like seemed like really good value to me at the time. So now we're going to be seeing what our rare is. It's going to be Unmoored Ego. That is not a that is not a land, but that is a this is a fun card though. Uh, one black, one blue, and one colorless. Choose a card name. Search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Not not a bad card, not a not a super excellent one, but it is fun. And you do get to just name a card and go, Whoop. nope, no more of that. No more of that, please. This is not the land we are looking for right here. This is a guild gate. These are, these are trash. They're tap lands. They do offer you one of two colors, but... In the end, a tap land is a tap land is a tap land. And we got the goblin token here. So we did not score the shock land hit today. Didn't score much of anything from that pack. But now we have Ravnica Allegiance still left to go. Ravnica Allegiance generally a set that had some pretty weak rares, as I recall correct as I if I recall correctly. You know, as I recall. It could be correctly or incorrectly. Some of them, uh, some rares in Ravnica Allegiance have aged quite well. I think you may know a specific one I'm talking about. It's a white card. We got the Concordia Pegasus here. Uh, flying creature. All it has is flying. Uh, they call creatures that only have keywords, they call those French vanilla, apparently. Uh, quench. <laughs> I know a guy who's had a lot of fun with this card in the past. Counter target spell, unless the controller pays a two generic mana. Got the old Rubble Slinger here. Another French vanilla creature. A 2-3 with Reach. Axe Bane Beast. Uh, this one is just plain vanilla. No abilities at all whatsoever. Uh, not a lot in the way of, uh, you know, big time abilities in this pack. Footlight Fiend. When it dies, you deal one damage to any target. Which is kind of a thing for devils. Yet another French vanilla creature. A Mammoth Spider. Nobody really cares about spiders. I do to some extent. I would like to build a spider tribal deck someday. Just to say I did it. But, you know, it is what it is. Consigned to the pit, which is what I'm going to do with most of these cards after this opening is over, probably. Rubble reading. Destroy target land. Everybody loves having their land destroyed, let me tell you. And then you scry too, which is a little unusual for red to have scrying. Blade juggler. Well, that's that sounds a little dangerous. Don't hurt yourself there, lady. Here we go. We're on our way to the uncommons. It's clear the stage. 
Black plus four and instant target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you may return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, then. Uh, we got the Sphinx of New Prov, which, as I always say, it's a Sphinx, so it stinks. Uh, just costs a little more to target it. It's got Flying and Vigilance, but it's nothing special, really. Whoa! Ooh, this is a pretty good uncommon. Yay for this. This is a this is actually a solid hit that, uh, uh, assuming we have a good rare, this could be a very profitable pack. Wilderness Reclamation. Green plus three. At the beginning of your instep, untap all lands you control. This is a actually a pretty valuable uncommon. This is probably three to four dollars. It's one of the ones we'll be listing uh, down in the pack spoilers uh, as far as price goes because I would be interested to see how much this is. And that brings us to our rare today, which is Emergency Powers. It is a mythic. Uh, not a terribly good one, though. This is a mythic that's worth less than a dollar. Uh, it is certainly worth less than any uh, than any Shockland would be. It's blue plus white plus five an instant. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and then draws seven cards. And then you exile Emergency Powers. And it has a little mechanic called Addendum. Which says if you cast this spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost 7 or less from your hand onto the battlefield. Yeah, this is not the most valuable mythic I could have pulled, but it is a mythic. Mythics are always fun, and I actually already own this card. So uh, so there, there you have it. Uh, a mythic pull, but not an exciting one. Anything, and the Simic Guildgate. Again, Guildgate's not what we're looking for. So we did not... We took our one shot with each pack, and it did not pan out for us today. But that is the nature of the beast when you gamble on packs. So we got a treasure token, which is... Uh, uh, we did not get the rare which would allow us to make the treasure tokens. Uh, if I had pulled a Smothering Tithe, that probably would have been worthy of a sound drop. But all the same, a treasure token. A, a dirty little tease. Just like me with the printer in the background, and just like the printer itself. This is just a day full... Of dirty teases. So Wilderness Reclamation is going to be uh, the big winner across both packs today, I'm sure. It is an uncommon, but you know, sometimes there's a lot of value in that uncommon slot. So, and I can't remember. Uh, there may be a place for that in my Rada deck, actually. Usually there's a, there's a solid place for that in green decks. Let me take a quick look at my... Uh, it'll be down in my enchantments... No, that's actually not part of this particular deck, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be able to slot it in somewhere at some point. It is a card always worthy of consideration. Let's look at that animated dragon token one more time. Wasn't that just the cutest man? <laughs> oh man, I'm such an easy mark. This is the cutest thing. They had an animated treasure token too. It looked like a looked like a mimic box. Maybe I'll get that one sometime. Maybe if I had gotten that one, it would have. Uh, would have changed my juju a little and I would have gotten the smothering tithe. Imagine getting a smothering tithe the day I buy an animated treasure token. That would have been super cute. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, we'll try to do more interesting stuff like this in the future. Uh, my local game store has some has some uh, Dragons of Tarkir packs, which I think has fetch lands in that set. So we could try to do the fetch land challenge sometime. Uh, but yeah, looking for something specific today, which is never a great idea when opening booster packs, but c'est la vie. Such is life. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have yourselves a fantastic day, evening, morning, whatever it is. As you're out there watching this, looking at my printer, lusting for that hot printer action. <laughs>